that we have. God has woke us up. He has kept us in our right mind. And we have our limbs and our bodies to just appreciate it. We can see what God has done for us. So why don't you just give him a, a hand clap this morning. Say a hallelujah. Give him some praise. Just tell God thank you on this Sunday morning.
ourselves you were great to us and we thank you for that Lord thank you Marcus for that praise team song now we just have a yes just have a few announcements uh, thank you thank you thank you thank you Eagles ministry Thank you for that wonderful prayer breakfast. Thank you, Gap Ministry. I uh, hope the, what you received on yesterday was nour nourishment for your spirit. Something that we can take in, something that we can deepen and bury inside that will grow one day, that God will allow it to grow. And we thank you for that. We'll point out, thank you for the ones that attended, that was on the Zoom uh, prayer of the conference. Uh, we really enjoyed it and look forward to seeing you on the next one. And I thank you for that. Uh, we want to give a uh, congratulations or lift up uh, Miss uh, Charlita Hatch. Uh, we just want to say congratulations. Uh, we know you're, you're out. You're doing a lot of things uh, in the community with helping us, uh, uh, the, the young, the old, the blacks. Uh, and we really love it. And we just want to say congratulations. Continue to let God lead you in the ventures that he has, that he puts inside of you uh, for you to do, whether if it's in the neighborhood, whether if it's in the books that you're writing, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, we want to say thank you. Thank you for being an inspiration to our young women, and thank you for being an inspiration to all women, and also men also, to give us courage to step out and do some things that God has put inside of us. So we just want to say thank you for that, and God continue to give you more so you can pour out more. Amen. Also, we want to uh, continue to uh, keep in prayers uh, all the sick and shut in, um, uh, the ones that are dealing with bereavement or anything anything like that. So please keep your uh, our prayer members lifted up. Uh, also, Miss Deborah Chisholm, um, on the loss of her brother, um, if uh, those who know her, please reach out, and those who don't, just lift her up in a word of prayer. Amen. All right, now we have time to uh, all something we all can participate in, and that's our offering time. So if you see, uh, as you look at the uh, different options that's on the screen, you can mail it in, uh, you can uh, text to give, or you can also come on, uh, come past the church, just uh, ask, call the church and find out it's a good time, or you see it on the screen, uh, come on and give. We want to always want to give back. Uh, to God because he's given to us. Amen. If we all can stand and say our tithes and confession or sit down just repeat it together. I am what God says I am. I live a life of purpose and fulfillment. Every need in my life is met because I have purpose in my heart to trust God in all things. I desire to tithe consistently. By faith I bring my tithes and offerings in obedience and with thanksgiving. By faith, I plant them in good soil at Chappelle Memorial. By faith, we offer these gifts to you, God, to further your ministry. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Now, our word for the day uh, will be coming from the book of John. The book of John is going to be the third chapter, the 16th verse, something that we all are familiar with. So we uh, might not even have to open your Bible to even repeat this with me or look at it. But John 3, 16, and it reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I have just read John 3, 16. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and the doers of his word. Amen. Now we have a selection by Minister Marcus.
our voices to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy toward us. your mercy, Lord, toward us we offer praise. Come on, you ought to lift your hands and say, Oh, Lord, we give you praise. You're crazy. 
Chappelle and friends, let's put a praise right there. Marcus just said, we owe God a praise. We should be able to offer God a praise for his goodness and for his mercy toward us. When I think about where I could have been and I think about where I should have been, the Lord saw fit to see it another way. So I owe him a praise. So I say hallelujah. So I say thank you, Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I honor you. Father, I'll forever give you the glory. Father, for I'll forever give you the honor. Father, I'll forever give you the praise that is due you. As the song says, when I think, when I just think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he has done for me, my soul cries out. My soul cries out. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. And I thank God for saving me because I could have been in my grave. I could have been not been in my right mind. I could have had empty pockets. I could have not had a home. But the Lord saw fit. The Lord saw fit to have it another way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. Father, we bless your name. 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 Father, I thank you for healing us. Father, I thank you for keeping us. Father, I thank you for restoring us. Father, I thank you for keeping us all in our right minds, Father God. Father God, I thank you for bringing us over into a new year, Father God. You've been a keeper. You've been
been a provider. You've been a hedge of protection. You've been a lover, Father God. We thank you most of all, Father God, for being, for being our friend. And for that, we say thank you, God. For that, we give you the glory. For that, we give you the honor. For that, we give you all the praise. All the praise that is due you on this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we bless your name. Father, we bless your name on this morning. Wherever you are, in your homes, in your car, if you're on your job, go ahead and give God some praise on this morning. Because you could have been and you should have been and you would have been. But God wrote that story out another way. So for that, take a moment on this morning, Chappelle and friends, to give God some praise. We owe him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Chappelle, I thank God for allowing us all to rise yet another morning just to see another day. First, I'd like to give honor to God and to my pastor, the Reverend Norman E. Carey Jr., to the leaders of Chappelle, my fellow um, late co-laborers, uh, Reverend Ashford, and his presence here in the sanctuary on today. I thank God for your support, your laboring, your commitment unto God and to this ministry. I thank God for all of the members and the leaders of Chappelle. Well, Chappelle, I do have a word from the Lord on this morning. And as you already heard the scripture uh, read in your hearing on, the, you know, on this morning by Minister Gerard, I would like to lift up a topic on this morning. And it is, Daddy Change the World. As you all know, on Wednesday, January Many witnessed the inauguration of our fourth president, our 46th president, and our first female vice president, Kamala Harris. Many also watched as our former president made his exit as he headed down onto Mar-a-Lago, Florida. Sadly, in the hearts of many was a sense of relief and joy because of his behavior, his demeanor, and his disposition over the past four years. I'm not suggesting, Chappelle, that America was without its problems before his presidency, but under his leadership was an increased amount of hate, arrogant white supremacy, and many injustices across the board that left many Americans once again feeling angry and hopeless. One of the events that changed the trajectory of things in 2020 was the death of George Floyd on May 25th, 2020. He was an African-American man killed during an arrest after a store clerk alleged that he had passed them a counterfeit bill in Minneapolis. Mr. Derek Chauvin, one of the four officers, took it upon himself to kneel on George Floyd's neck for eight minutes and 46 seconds. All while Mr. Floyd cried out that he could not breathe, which led to him not being able to breathe and losing his own life. His cry was not only heard in Minneapolis, not only in America, but across the world. How is it that we have become so numb to hate? How is it that we have become so numb to senseless murders that could have been avoided if genuine love was present. You see, I've heard many times that whatever is in the heart of man will be revealed through his words and his actions towards one another. One of the declarations made during the observation of many across the world chanting George Floyd's name, watching blacks and whites come together, was that of his very own daughter, Gianna Floyd, and she declared, Daddy, change the world. I vividly remember seeing her video on Instagram, and it moved me to tears. She realized at six years of age, the impact that was made as a result of the cruelty 
and injustice that was instilled upon her father. Daddy did change the world in that many began coming together to protest in unity, to fight for justice, to fight for the right for people to be treated fairly. People across the country began to wake up and fight for change because they were tired of seeing this happen all too many times. Well, Chappelle, I have to tell you that there was someone who had been taking a back seat, witnessing some injustices in the world, witnessing sin after sin, the lying, the stealing, the killing, the adultery, the fornication, the idol worshiping, and the list goes on and on. Well, Minister Marcy, who could that be? I'm speaking of the almighty God. You see, when God began creating the heavens and the earth and the oceans and the sea and the sky and the stars and the gardens, when he performed, when he created day and night and night and day and even the moon, he even went so far to create man and give a man a helpmate to have dominion over the world. He had the idea that all will be, a, be, be created equal and beautiful in his sight. He saw that everything he created, he declared that it was blessed and that it was good. But somehow along the way, man became disobedient and sin became the barrier between man and God. Even in this, God still provided for his children. There are countless soap operas in the Old Testament in which you see God's hand move on behalf of his children despite their sins. He used Levites and he used priests and he elevated nobodies to somebodies. And he also, to God's dismay, did he see this continuous cycle of sin being repeated over and over again, so much so that it angered God, so much so that God himself became jealous, so much so that many created statuses of sort, and God saw them put idols up to worship before him, and all he wanted was his praise, and all he wanted was his glory, and all he wanted, Chappelle and friends, was his honor, and all he wanted was just a little intimate time with his children. And sadly, doesn't that storyline still exist today, Chappelle, that many have chosen other people and idols and that of TV, that of Instagram, that of Facebook, that of TikTok, and now we have Clubhouse, that of bingo centers, that of the lottery, that of men, that of women, that of rappers, Instagram thoughts, and so on, and we put them in front, in the forefront, instead of including God in every facet of their lives to bring him glory. Yes, yeah, we have. And we wonder why we, America, we, Chappelle, are in the predicament that we are in today. You and your household, you concerning your job, are in the predicament that you are in today because of what you chose to idol, which was not God. You see, it, it's because just like the Israelites, despite how God showed his mighty hand to them time after time, they still went about their own agenda. As dramatic and cold as I might sound this morning, bringing this to your attention, because I know I may have stepped on some toes here, but God sent me to tell you that he still loves you despite your sins, despite your shortcomings, he still loves you. Just as we are experiencing unrest in the world today, this is not God's first rodeo. In fact, Solomon told you that there is nothing new under the sun. Chappelle, all I want to do is lift up three instruments of hope, just like Joe, President Joe Biden did on Wednesday. I pray that I will bring a sense of hope to you. I pray that I will bring a sense of encouragement to you so that we, as God's children, will get back in alignment 
so that we can put God back in the forefront where he belongs. The first thing God sent me to tell you is this. As you proceed forward in this new year, 2021, and as you proceed forward under the leadership and ministry here at Chappelle, and even under the leadership of President Joe Biden, God said, the first thing I want you to know is, I am that I am. In Exodus 3, when Moses questioned God's assignment for him to lead the children of Israel to the promised land, the first thing Moses asked God was, why me? If you know the story of Moses, you know, he was an abandoned baby found by Pharaoh's daughter. Not only that, Moses was a murderer. And so Moses knew this, but what he didn't know was that God knew too. And even in his sins, even in the fact that he was a murderer, God still chose to use him. Maybe that's a bit of encouragement to someone out there that despite your sins, maybe you are a murderer. Maybe you committed adultery. Maybe you left and went by the wayside, and now you have to come back and repent to God. Know that on today that God can still use you despite what sin you may even sit in, in this, on this morning. That God can still use you. He asked God, who am I? God assured him right then and there that I will be with you. I will be with you. Then he questioned God, saying, what should I tell them? What should I tell the Israelites when they ask, who sent me? And God said, tell them I am that I am. Don't forget, Moses, to tell them that I am that I am. And Marcy, on this morning, I want you to remind the people that I am that I am that I am Alpha and I am Omega and I am the beginning and I am the end. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac and I am the God of Jacob. Don't forget to tell them that I am the healer, that I am the provider, that I am the friend, that I am their light in the middle of darkness, that I am Chappelle the way maker, I am the miracle worker, I am the promise keeper, I am your comforter, and I am the one who can strengthen you in your time of trouble. Chappelle, the first point is this, don't forget that God still is, I am, that I am. The second instrument of hope I want to bring to you is this. Is that God had a plan since the beginning of time, and God still has a plan for your life. Jeremiah 29 and 11 says this. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. That I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope, and to give you a future. You understand, Chappelle, that despite where you sit today, that God still has a plan for your life. Well, how do you know? In Psalms, it tells me that God knew you and he knew me while we were still in our mother's womb. In Matthew 10, it tells me that God already knew the number of hairs on your head before you were even thought about, before you were even conceived, that God already knew that you were a more of a value to him than a sparrow. God already said in Psalms 29 that you are fearfully and that you have been wonderfully made and marvelous are the works of the Lord. Chappelle, God had a plan for you since the beginning of time, and even on today, God still has a plan for you despite your circumstance, despite your health condition, despite where you are today. God still has a plan. I'll say it again. God still has a plan. Now, carry someone else. God still has a plan for your life. Understand that where you are today is no surprise to God. I'll lift up my third and final point, and this, and this is it. God told me to tell you that he loves you. He said, I love you. John 3, 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only, not his second, not his third, not his fourth, he gave up his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Chappelle, I just want to close by telling you this, that my daddy, 
change the world. I'm not talking about James Lewis, the late James Lewis Fleming. I'm talking about my heavenly father, the one that I said was Alpha, the one that I said was Omega, the one I said, in fact, is the beginning and the end. My daddy changed the world. My daddy was aware of all the injustices. He said that he saw the hypocrisy. My daddy said he saw the adultery that's going on. My daddy said that he was aware of all the lies that was done in the Old Testament, in the New Testament here on earth today. My daddy said that he was aware of the cheating that takes place. He's aware of the murders. He is aware of the gossiping that ta that's taking place in his kingdom. He is aware of all the naysayers. He is aware of all the idol worshipers. But I want to bring you good news on sh this morning, Chappelle, that even in the midst of all of that, that my daddy still changed the world, that he loved you so much that he sent his only begotten son by the name of Jesus Christ so that sin could no longer be the barrier between us and him. He loved us so much that Jesus walked this earth earth to and fro that there was an immaculate conception before he even came to his claim to this world that at a young age he thought it important enough he thought it gracious enough he thought of God loving enough that he would send him in fact to the sin sick world he endured the naysayers he endured the Pharisees talking about him he endured many disciples that left him in the midst of him teaching in the midst of him preaching in the midst of him performing miracles but Jesus understood his mission here on his earth, and he took the backbiting, and he took the beating, and he took the bruises, and he took the gossiping, and he took everything that he endured while in this sin sick world. Why? Because he loved you, and he loved me so much that God sent his only begotten son that whosoever, he said, whosoever believe in him shall not perish and have everlasting life. And as you all know, that that is not how the story ends. That on his way to Calvary, he made a pit stop there in the Garden of Gethsemane. And he said, Father, if you take this cup from me. And he cried, and I'm sure that he begged, and he pleaded for God to see this another way. But him understanding the full mission to come to this world to be, to be a change agent of the world. He, 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 he bossed up, as one would say today, and he took the beatings, and he got himself together. He prayed unto God. He was arrested, and as you all know, they beat him. They spit on him. He took that cross and made his way up Calvary Hill, and as they said, they hung him high, and they stretched him wide, and my Lord, he hung his head, and for me and you, he died. And as the song says, that that is not, Chappelle, how the story ends that three days later, that my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that he rose again so that you may have life, and I may have life, and your mother can have life, and your daddy can have life, and your sister can have life, and your mother can have life, and your mother can have life. And I said, your sister and brother can have life and not just have life, but he came so that we could have life more abundantly. Chappelle, I want you to make a declaration on today that my daddy changed the world. I know George Floyd changed the world. I know he got the attention of many, but I'm here to tell you that my daddy changed the world so much so that when I am down, I have no problem lifting up the very name of Jesus because the word says that at the name of Jesus that every knee shall bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord, that he is the King of Kings, that he is the keeper. He is the one Chappelle that came to the sin sick world to make a sacrifice to make a sacrifice so that you and I can have life and have it more abundantly. So the next time you feel beaten down, the next time you feel burdened, the next time you feel like no matter who the president is, that you can make a way out of no way, that there is no hope for this country, there is no hope for your life, there is no hope for your family, there is no hope for you because of the circumstance that you sit in there today. I want you to remember and declare loudly that daddy changed the world. He sent his only begotten son by the name of Jesus. He loved you that much, Chappelle. He loved you that much, friends and family that are tuning in over the airways. Our Lord and Savior loved you that much that despite our sins, he sent his very son to be the change agent to get us back in right standing with him. Daddy changed the world. 
on this morning, Chappelle. You know, no, this was a hoop and hollering sermon, but just something maybe to bring a bit of encouragement, maybe a word to inspire you, the ones that are feeling hopeless, the ones that are maybe going through, the ones that are maybe burdened down by illness, the ones that for whatever reason, reason have chosen to walk away from God. Maybe 2020 dealt you a bad hand. I know many have lost loved ones, and I know personally that that can be enough to take you out. But guess what? If I am still standing here today, and my daddy saw fit to change my world through loss, through family turning their backs, through loneliness, through depression, through sickness, then he can change your world too. So I want to extend an invitation for you to get to know my daddy, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the one that I said that they hung high on the cross. They beat him. They pierced him in the side. They bound his hands to the cross with nails. They crowned his head with thorns, so much so that he bled out. If you want to get to know him, the one that can only, the only one that I know of that can change your world, then I invite you on this morning. Romans 10 and 9 said that if you confess it with your mouth and believe with your heart that the Lord Jesus, that he died on that cross, and not only that he died, but that he rose from that grave so that you and I may have life and have it more abundantly, then quite simply, if you're, done, if you're able to do those two things, confess and believe, then you are saved. Maybe you're tuning in on this morning, you've already been saved. For whatever reason, you turn your back, to, back against God. Maybe someone says something harsh to you. Maybe a church member looked at you the wrong way. Maybe you got off the choir. Maybe if you stopped ushering, whatever it is, I invite you to come back and repent. All the Lord requires you to do is repent. Whatever your situation is, know that you can repent. And that's simple. The Lord will forgive you of your sins. You are still valuable to the kingdom. So I invite you to come back. Come back home to Chappelle. Come back and serve God. Not just serve God, but come back and be, in a, be of assistance to Pastor Carey's and Sister Carey's ministry here. As they have continued to sow out and pour out all for God, then you, you, because of God's love and his kindness and his grace towards you, you can do the same. If you're looking for a church home and you're tuning in virtually, I invite you to our church here in Chappelle. I just told you that our pastor is the Reverend Normandy Carey. I always say he is a man after God's own heart. He is a humble man. He has an attentive ear to his flock. So I invite you to come and be a part of what God is doing here in Chappelle. At this time, I'm going to ask Reverend Ashford to come and offer an altar prayer and to close us out with benediction. If you are one that you choose to join our church, I ask you to contact the number listed there on the screen and then Miss Pearlie will be able to direct you. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Now, O oh gracious and heavenly Father, we come before you tonight and we, first of all, repent. And we take full advantage of our status. The status of being saved, status of us being pulled out of the fire, hallelujah. You didn't have to save us, but you did. 
didn't have to deliver us, but you did. Didn't have to make us whole, but you did. And so we thank you for that. We glorify you. We magnify you. In the name of Jesus. And we come before you today on this Sunday and we declare, oh God, that we're going to serve you. Hallelujah. We're going to serve you even more. We're going to be more faithful. We're going to stand with you in the name of Jesus. For you did promise that we could stand before the angels. You promise to keep us in that supernatural realm of things. You promised to give us power to promote the kingdom of God. So here we are, God. Here we are. And we're glad that you took away that filthy garment glad that you you covered us with the blood of Jesus we're glad that you that the, the stench of sin have been moved away glad that you washed us in the blood of the lamb hallelujah and so we're going to receive, oh God, the blessings that come with that. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, have your way, oh God. Have your way in our mind. Have your way in our spirit. Hallelujah. And we're going to submit ourselves to you, God. Out of, out of gratitude. You knew we were guilty. You knew the devil had us outright. And, and he tricked us. And then he told on us. But I, oh God, you forgave us. And you set us free. You rebuked the devil. You gave us another chance. Hallelujah. So we're going to hit the ground running. Hallelujah. For the rest of our days, we're running for Jesus, and we're not tired yet. We've been running for Jesus, and we're not tired yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting us where we are. Thank you for our breakthrough. Thank you for changing our mind. Hallelujah. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Wow, God, take our hand and use our hands 
take our feet and use our feet. Take our vote. Take our voices and use our voices. Take our mind. Oh, God, our whole being and use us for your glory. Hallelujah. Use us for your honor in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. Hallelujah. We commit ourselves to you. We recommit ourselves to you for all you've done for us. In the name of Jesus, we do pray. Thank you and thank you. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Because you've been better to us than we could ever be to ourselves. Better than we could ever be to you. And you're so worthy. Worthy of our praise. Spirit to lead and guide us every step of the way. May it rule, rest and super rule forever and ever. Amen and amen.